Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to another episode of Social Justice Sunday. Even though it's not actually Sunday, it's Monday, but something came up yesterday, and that's a long story. Roll the intro, please! My name is Chris, welcome back, and if you're new, welcome to my channel. I study sports science at the University of Copenhagen, and I also have a fitness channel. And some of you have asked me about my thoughts on this specific topic, which is something I'm interested in, since it's related to sports and politics, so I thought it made sense to make a video on it. Now, it's a very sensitive and complex topic, and there is a lot of uh, outrage from both sides, and people are very strongly convinced of their own beliefs on this matter. I don't think it's that simple, though. I'm I'm not sure there is a clear answer uh, of this at the moment, but as you know, I'm always willing to change my mind if good evidence and arguments are presented. So leave your thoughts in the comments down below. It always uh, creates an interesting discussion. So what my goal is really for this video is to offer a more balanced perspective and discussion on this case and also regarding the general question of should trans women be allowed to compete in women's sports? To make it clear, should a biological man who identifies as a woman or someone who transitioned from man to woman uh, through medical interventions, should they be able to compete in women's sports competitions? So first now I'll give you a bit of background if you don't know the story. Then I'll take a look at the arguments for and against and also evaluate them critically and then I'll present you my own thoughts on the matter. So long story short, uh, Laurel Hubbard, uh, who is a, a trans woman who was once a man, but transitioned to a woman with uh, hormone treatment, has been selected uh, to compete in the Olympics in a weightlifting competition. And that makes her the first transgender athlete uh, to compete at the Olympics. And that's really awesome in a lot of ways. And she became eligible to compete because her testosterone levels was below a certain threshold. And as you guys know, testosterone is the male hormone, which is one of the primary reasons why biological males have more muscle mass than biological women. And that's just in general. I'm not saying that there aren't some women who are stronger than some men and some men who are really weak. It's just a general statistical fact, okay? that men are stronger than women. And I guess that's a reason why we separated sports into male sports and women's sports in the first place, at least in the different sports where it made sense. Not like esports, that shouldn't really matter, uh, but something like weightlifting. So the arguments for letting her compete at the Olympics Inclusion, that's really the key word. Um, we are including the, the transgender folks. Trans women has had a rough time historically, and that's for certain, of course. And I'm really all in for inclusion. We should have uh, space and room for everyone. And this is, after all, the first time a transgender athlete has ever you know, been allowed to compete in this. So shouldn't we be okay with that? And another argument for is that they, you know, check the athletes individually to see if their testosterone levels are too high. You know, as I mentioned, she was below a certain threshold. So isn't, what's the problem in, then, you know, isn't that okay? And that sort of brings me to the arguments against, uh, because even though you may have a lower testosterone level uh, right now, the fact that you went through puberty and all that, that still gives you an unfair advantage um, because you have increased bone density and you likely still have more muscle mass statistically than other women. So that is an issue, I think. And it's hard not to look past that because we care so much about fairness in sports. So it's a really tough one. Another argument against, uh, which is something I came up with, uh, I'm sure a lot of people have thought about this, but as inclusion was an argument, an argument for, I find that inclusion is an argument against as well. I mean, it's not only trans people who had a hard time historically, women has had a really hard time historically as well. So if we bring someone in who is technically a biological male into a women's sports competition, that's not very inclusive for women, suddenly. So the inclusion argument can be used in both ways, like for and against. 
Um, I hope you get my point here. Again, there is a reason why we separate sports like weightlifting into uh, a male you know, competition and a female competition based on the biological gender. Because if we just mixed it all and didn't care about gender at all, uh, then it would be, if anything, it would be even more, you know, male dominated sports. The sports arena would be even more male dominated because there probably wouldn't be any women in the weightlifting competitions then. So in my opinion, it's the most politically correct thing we can do is to separate sports. And I'm very LGBT positive in many ways and uh, all for all of that. And I subscribe fully to the idea that the social gender uh, is a you know social construct because it will always depend on social situations um, but I also think that there is, you know, we have a categorization of the biological gender, uh, which is a male and female, which is defined by our, our chromosomes and sex organs. So it's, uh, it's a really tough one. And I find that we need to think about this in terms of consequences um, and, you know, utilitarianism, which steps we can take that will... Uh, improve our general well-being in the society. I mean, what could happen if we start allowing something like this? That's like uh, an argument against this. You could fear some sort of slippery slope. Um, I don't know if you've watched the South Park episode where they also um, made fun of this, but what if someone comes in who is a biological male and just absolutely crushes all the women in a women's sports competition? Again, that wouldn't be very inclusive to women. And I think everyone would find that to be a, you know, big joke that would be totally unfair. So that's kind of a problem because also it shouldn't be like uh, the transgender uh, women can only be allowed to compete if they don't win. That's not fair for the, tr for the trans folks either. But honestly, I don't find it to be like a very big problem at the moment. I'm just concerned what it could develop into uh, because there aren't even that many trans women um, interested in you know competing in professional sports like that at the moment. So I don't really agree with the very far right attitude which is like uh, this is the end of the world. I mean we must see what happens and take the right steps from there. I also thought about a potential solution and that would be like making a third category so you have uh, male sports, women's sports, and transgender category. But then again, you don't really recognize them as being actual women if we make a third category. So that's not fair for them either. But maybe that's where the biological categorization comes in, which says that they aren't actually biological women. So yeah, it's a tough one. I don't know, what do you guys think? Uh, do let me know in the comment section, that would be awesome. I think it's a really tough one because if we don't uh, allow trans women to compete in women's sports, then, you know, actually that pretty much sucks pretty badly for the trans athletes. That really sucks and that's not very inclusive. Um, but at the other hand, if we allow them, then there are a lot of women in these uh, sports competitions who don't find it fair either. So it's like, whatever you do, you end up upsetting someone. So then it has to be like an evaluation who is going to be most upset um, about which action and then do the thing that harms uh, the least amount of people. But that can be very hard to measure, of course. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching. Namaste. Like if you like it. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Subscribe if you want more content. Check out my fitness channel as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.